Hello, I am Patrick, and this is Notes on a Fragrance, and today I thought I would do a review of fragrances that I don't like. Um, all the ones that I've done in the past are reviews of fragrances that I really do like, so I thought I'd do some I don't care for. And of course I don't have any of these fragrances, so we're going to use the ads in the magazines to talk about them. So the first one I'm going to go after is... Hugo Boss Pure. Um, it's a great ad. Nice looking ad. Cool ad. Fragrance, not so good. Very boring. Another light, fresh citrus scent. So, for those of you that think that um, Aqua de Jo and Clinique Happy are the deal, well, you'll like this fragrance. Um, just doesn't leave much of an impression. Just not a favorite for me. Um, I mean, the bottle's nice. It's a cool-looking bottle. It has a silver back to it, but just not a fan of this fragrance. So that is Hugo Boss Pure. Then, moving on to... Ah, Lacoste Essential. I know this is a favorite. It sells very well, but I don't care for it. Um, it's just too light for me. Um doesn't have a lot of depth to it. The ad's great. Very nice looking guy. Looks like he's lost his shirt. Maybe if we're lucky he'll lose his pants. But I digress. But um, yep, this fragrance is, like I said, it's a great seller, but I just, it's not a favorite. I just don't care for it. Yep, Lacoste Essential, which it's not really. Um, let's see. Next is Josh Hartnett for Emporio Armani Diamonds. This is another lightweight fragrance. has no staying power at all. Not much to remember about it after you've sprayed it on. After about an hour, you'll probably forget you have it on. The bottle's nice. Another good-looking bottle. Not the best picture of Josh Hartnett. I don't understand why they chose kind of a goofy pick. Um... He looks so much better than that. But, um, yeah, they need to do an intense version of this like they did for women's Emporio Armani Diamonds. Something that actually has depth. <laughs> not, a, not a fan of this one. And the next one. Polo Black and Polo Double Black. Okay. Good looking ad. It's fine. It looks just like Polo, so... Um, the fragrances, if I had to pick one of the two of those, it'd be double black. It's the stronger of the two. It's going to stay on longer. Smells better. Uh, they did black and double, ba double black very, like, a year apart. Not even that, I think. And I think probably all that did was confuse people. Um, not a fan of much from Polo, anyhow. I just don't care for Ralph Lauren's fragrances. Purple label's pretty good. I'd wear that one if, you know, there was nothing else. So that is Double Black and Polo Black from Ralph Lauren. Um, who's, who's next? This one I was disappointed in. It's Prada Infusion, the new one for men. I was hoping for so much more from this fragrance. Um, it is not like the first one, so if you didn't like the first one, there may be hope for you on this one. Um, it's a very light fresh, clean scent, and it is powdery. I'll say it is a powdery scent for men. It's very similar to the women's. It's very hard for me to tell the difference between the two. I think any they could be a crossover fragrance for anybody, man or woman. Um, like I said, I was just wanting more out of this fragrance. It just wasn't what I was hoping for. It's a great looking bottle. It has a nice, cool silver nameplate. Very clean, modern looking. Uh, very nice bottle like that, but just I just am not a fan of the fragrance. Uh, also, too, it is, like I said, it is a lighter fragrance. It has that powdery quality to it. It does give it some staying power. It's not going to fade quickly on you. I mean, you can still smell it several hours later, which you would think that it's not going to last, but it does. I will give it that. Like I said, was wanting much more out of Prada for the new fragrance, but it didn't happen. Um, Hugo Boss's new fragrance newer than pure. This is called Element, and it has John Rhys Meyer, who's looking great. 
Very nice looking ad. He has on a cool shirt. And from smelling this in the magazine, it actually smells like it's pretty good. Better than pure. I'd have to try it on, which I haven't done that yet. Uh, it hasn't hit my store yet, so I'm sure it will. Um, do I think it'll smell good on me? Uh, I doubt it. Will people love it? Mm, yeah, I'm sure they'll buy it. I hopefully they will better than pure because pure, pure has not really been a good seller. So, you know, this one, since I have a celebrity behind it, it might help this one. So, like I said, it, it, it might be pretty good. I, I would try this one on just to see. Um, it has, smells like it has a little bit of a spicy quality to it, but it's still kind of light and airy. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, DKNY for men. Oh, dear. This one is still a DKNO for me and a DKPU. Um, just don't like it. Um, it's nice to see that Mark Vanderloo here, the supermodel, is still getting work. Donna Karen has used him for years, and rightly so. He's a very good-looking guy. Um, but the fragrance, oh boy, it's just, uh, it'll be forgotten just like all the ones in the past have been except for the, her first two, which actually smelled like she participated in those fragrances, as I know she did, because they were made um, before, you know, she sold out to Estee Lauder. So I just, you know, she needs to quit with the men's fragrances. If this is as good as it gets, she just needs to, to stop and tell them to quit, quit making them, because I just don't like it. It's just, there's nothing to it. Nothing to it. Nice ad. Average fragrance. Um, let's see. Okay, here's where the hate mail is going to come in. If it hadn't come in already, it's going to come in now. I am king. Well, I am queen. And I am bored with this fragrance. Cool ad. It's nice to see that he's doing his own ads out there on the Wave Runner. But... The only thing I'll give this fragrance is it's better than Unforgivable because Unforgivable was just that. Unforgivable. Bad. I mean, ugh. And the women's wasn't much better. But this one, not. I mean, it's better than Unforgivable, but that's it. The bottle, eh. It adds the best part of this one. I mean, it looks like a million, but it doesn't smell like a million. Um, yep. I am disappointed. And um, I will talk real quickly about the Beauty Fashion Magazine. Um, this is a trade magazine for people in the cosmetics and fragrance industry. They do have a website. Um, if um, you want to subscribe, it's $15 for a year to do it. Just subscribe online. It's 12 issues a month. I mean, 12 issues a year, one a month. Very nice, glossy magazine. Uh, it gives you a heads up on what's coming, uh, the, what's going to be hitting the stores. So it tells you about them. It tells you the notes in them, the prices, and what stores it'll launch in. So I've subscribed to this for years, and it's always uh, good to have, good to know what's coming. So one of the things they do is the Douglas Report, um, and this is the top 10 fragrances, and they do a U.S. version, and they do a European version. And um, for December 2008... Um, Light blue uh, from Dolce & Gabbana for men was number one, which does not surprise me. Um, for December 2008 for Europe, it was Le Mal from Jean-Paul Gaultier. That surprises me that it's still in the top ten and it's number one. But I think Europeans are a little bit more brand loyal than Americans are. So if, if they find something they really like and, you know, it has good quality, they stick with it. So, and Lamal turns out to be a number one for 2008 for um, the Douglas Report for uh, UK, for Europe. So that's pretty interesting, I think. So that's always kind of neat to see what's in the top ten, what's number one, as well as what's coming soon. So, yeah, those are... Some of the fragrances that I do not care for, there's a whole lot more than that, but I just don't have them or have an ad for them, so I um, might do another one of these in the future. It's feeling feisty today and bitchy, so I figured I would just do a fragrance rant. So, thanks for watching. Have a good one.